Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Food Finders and today we're gonna do laksa. For those of you not familiar, laksa is a kind of fusion dish that's from Chinese and Malay origins. Curry laksa is predominantly using curry as a base along with coconut. We're filming at 7 in the morning for you guys. Yep, the sun just came up. <laughs> we're gonna have a good time today. Who wouldn't want to eat laksa so early in the morning? Like, Alright guys, let's go to our first destination. So we're here at 928 Yishun Laksa. This stall has no signboard but it's famously known as the Block 928 Yishun Laksa. We're here really early so there is not much of queue but usually the queue extends really long. It's super popular amongst the Yishun residents so you have to try it if you're ever in the Yishun area. We have people coming all the way from JB to 928 Yishun Laksa. I'm like really surprised. This is how good and how well known it is. <laughs> this place has been around for over 20 years. They use a lot of fresh ingredients. I think that's something that they really pride themselves on. The special thing I noticed about the laksa is that they have crab stick in it and I don't normally see crab sticks in laksa. For me, I know this might be an unpopular um, opinion but I actually don't like cockles. I like them. You can see that they didn't really cook the hum with the laksa broth itself. It's more like blanche then they just put it on top. So this is kind of to prevent the cockles from overcooking. You want to have medium rare-ish uh, cockles, if not it gets too tough. La. Yeah, I forgot to say, please hold the hum. The bowl that we have here is actually the small bowl and it costs $2.80. For the bigger bowl, it's $3.30. Really reasonable prices. Mm, very good. It's really flavorful. And I like how it's not too watery. So I think there's a good balance between like the creaminess and the soupiness of the broth. There's a serving of laksa leaves and sambal chili. You can really just mix in as much chili as you want. Lah. I mix all the chili. Yeah, you get a lot of like the coconut milk flavors. Oh, you can see the shrimp, the minced shrimp. I like the springiness uh, of the noodles. Yeah, I would say it's pretty good. I like it. The broth is really good. It's quite a lot of layers. There's a lot of noodles though. Um, I think it's way too much noodles. Such a grumpy man. Because there's so much noodles, it, it like soaks up yeah, the soup, you, you know? Mean, so it like... gets a bit drier than I like it. The essence of like laksa is really about the soup. I'm gonna try the hum. Even though I said I don't like hum. I mean, I might change my mind. I'm gonna guess you still don't like it. I don't like it. Oh my god, I regret this. It's kind of like, I don't know, do you eat oysters? Similar-ish? No, this is like the discount oysters, okay? Sorry, this is what poor people <laughs> eat. <up>. Like poor, <laughs> poor man's uh, oyster. The crab stick actually gives a sweetness to the soup. Really good bowl of neighborhood laksa for the price. I would give this 4.5. My only gripe is the ratio of bihun to gravy. It's a bit out of the way, but Yishun is not that bad. I would give this a, a 4 out of 5. Where I live in Singapore, right? I'm actually pretty far from Yishun, like really far. So no, I don't think I'd come back here for it. But nonetheless, it's still really delicious. Okay guys, on to the next place. So we're here at Tanglin Halt Market and we're gonna try the Wei Yi Laksa. When we got here, it was about 10-ish. It's a long queue already. Wei Yi Laksa opens really early at 5.30 a.m. and then they just sell out and close around 12, 12.30 p.m. Mainly, there are two different types of laksa you can get. You can get the prawn one or you can get the chicken one. And then, of course, there is the option for cockles or ham. We have the big one that's $5. This one has chicken, prawn and cockles. The small one is $3. This one doesn't come with cockles because, you know, yeah, you don't like cockles. Oh it's a really huge bowl. I think looking at the broth itself, it is a lot thinner. It's more like a soup. The cockles are still slightly pink, so it's not overdone. You can also see the minced shrimp inside, so that's good. They half the prawn. It's like one prawn. God damn it, it's one prawn. <laughs> I cheat my feelings. They cut in half yeah, for the illusion of two. I thought like since yours was a bigger bowl, you'd get more prawns than me. It's quite light actually. Oh. I'm not a fan of the broth itself. It's very soupy. It's not like the usual laksa that I like to have, which is creamier and thicker. But you know, that's my personal preference. In terms of flavor, it's kind of lacking. It's really just so watery. I don't know. I think the spice is there, but it's not very prominent. Uh, Personal choice, not a fan of the, the more soup-like gravy. But I like that there is chicken. I like that it's like soaked up most of the laksa broth. I think the chicken was surprisingly good. Yeah, chicken, chicken yeah, was the, good. The texture is nice. It doesn't feel dry at all. If you want to eat laksa but then you, you don't want to feel too heavy afterwards, I think this would be a good goal for you. I would give this place a 3 out of 5. I'm not a fan of the broth. Give it a 3. It's passable. I wouldn't queue anything more than like 
10 minutes okay. for this. I don't want to be mean about it, but I'm a little confused with the crowd and why it's so popular. I think it's average. All right, let's head on to the next Laksa spot. So we're here at Alexandra Village Food Center and we're going to try the Depo Road Dun Shan Mei Clay Pot Laksa. This place has a Michelin Bib Gourmand and what makes it special, of course, is the clay pot itself. But it's not cooked within the clay pot, it just helps to retain the heat. So I was expecting the laksa to be cooked in the clay pot, but actually they just pour the broth and the noodles in. So it's actually two different layers. So there's like the basic laksa broth, and then they add on this small coconut cream heavy gravy on top. You can actually smell the coconut. I'm a bit disappointed that it's not actually cooked in a clay pot because the flavours and all is a bit different, especially if you use like charcoal to cook clay pot. There's the four, five, or six dollar option. Here we have the small option, it's just four dollars. You see some tapok chicken fish cake, and it also comes with cockles. Uh. Hers doesn't have cockles though, because no, you know, no, thank you. as we've established. So far, I think we found two hums. Not very generous with their hums. So you can see that the hums are like more cooked, very little redness already. Probably a bit more on the overcooked side already. Yeah, it's still not that bad, but definitely a lot more cooked than the other places that we've had. Light before you mix in the coconut. But once you mix in the extra coconut gravy thing, oh. like it becomes a lot heavier. I'm not sure if it's the clay pot, but the heat definitely adds on to that fiery punch to the chilli. Yeah, you get very creamy texture. It's very rich. I like the thickness of the broth, but I don't like how it's a bit grainy. Oh, the mince shrimp. For me, I like it because of that. Like it adds that to the texture. Coarseness. Yeah. The clay pot keeps it hot for longer, and the springiness of the noodles goes away faster. Hey, crap, is that a prawn? Wait, I didn't find a prawn. Is that a prawn? There's a prawn. I can't find a prawn. <laughs> I think they replaced your hum with prawn. So I would give this a 3.5 upon 5. I think they're a bit stingy on some of the toppings. But to be fair, we did get the $4 bowl. I definitely still prefer the thicker broths and this is like the thickest so far. I would give this a 4 upon 5, purely based on the broth itself. Yeah, I think based on previous episodes where we tried dishes with the Michelin Big Gourmand, this one, like, I can see how it's still like a local favourite. Let's go on to the next place. I'm ready to have laksa fun. Laksa fun? <laughs> <laughs> Your lameness is rubbing off me. So we are here at the original Katong Laksa, also known as Janggut Laksa. We are at the Queensway Shopping Centre branch. They actually have four branches over Singapore now. The brand is over 70 years old. They started out as a push cart and people couldn't eat it with chopsticks because they had to stand with it. So practicality, they just cut the noodles and that's why you can easily scoop it up with a spoon. So that's why they don't give you chopsticks at all, even until now. So we have the medium bowl here. This one is the 550 one. So the prices are 450, 550 and then 650. And then also we have the Ota here, it's about 130 each. I didn't know that people ate laksa with ota. <laughs> it's very common. I, I didn't know that at all. They are the original, original uh, compared to like other places that claim they are katong laksa. This one is actually the real deal. Every time I come here, like I die, die, I have to eat this. The consistency of the soup, really good as well. This is what I like in laksa. The soup is very creamy. Minstream is damn generous. Like, the whole thing is just like minstream. Yeah, you get the grainy texture as well, but probably not. No, it's not as coarse not as, as the other ones. Really delicious. I won't miss out on the richness of the broth being accompanied by the balance of the bihun because I can have it together in one spoon easily. I love how I don't need chopsticks for this because if you're lazy like me, this is great. The laksa leaves, it's quite refreshing. It cuts through the heaviness of the dish. Every spoonful is really just like a mini laksa. So it's not as separated versus other laksa. This is all in one spoonful. We're gonna try the ota now. Oh really? You put it? Yeah, you put the ota in the... Really? I'm sorry, I don't know this. Am I even Singaporean? Pretty good. There's not much other ingredients, so the ota adds a bit more variety to the ingredients. I really like it. I give this a 5 on 5. Slightly pricey though, like a bit pricier than usual, but I think I would pay for the quality. I think for me, I'd give this a 5 upon 5 simply because from the texture to the flavour, it all adds up together, matches each other perfectly. Definitely deserve the 5 on 5. Okay, let's move on to the next laksa place. So we're here at Bukit Timah Food Centre and we're going to try the Terry Katong Laksa. They really pride themselves in not having preservatives. No MSG, no evaporated milk, just the fresh ingredients, spices, herbs. Family is uh, Peranakan. The owner said that this recipe is from his grandma. This is the 350 bowl that we have here. But if you want to have, let's say, additional noodles, that's just an extra 50 cents. And then if you want an upsize, that's just $5. 
they also sell Ota, but they sold out of Ota, so we don't have Ota now. Pretty petite bowl, I guess, for 350 but it's quite affordable. They stuck with the entire style of cutting the noodles in small bits so that you can get it in like one bite as well. Oh, oh that's wow. spicy. The broth is a little bit more on the thicker side. It's very packed with flavour. Of course, there's hum as well. And I think they did the hum pretty well. It's still pretty pink. Inside, there is prawn, there's sliced fish cake, and then there's tauke. Only small gripe about the noodles. I think it's not cut as proportionally or short. So sometimes you still get these like, little strands of noodles running down the spoon. The flavour really comes from the rempa. With a lot of Peranakan dishes, it's all about the rempa. I wish there was a bit more of sweetness inside the broth. I feel like it's lacking a bit of sweetness. Not a whole lot of toppings. I mean, it's a pretty modest bowl. It's the most Peranakan tasting laksa I've had so far. If you like spicy food, I think you will really like this one. I haven't even mixed <laughs> in the, the chilli and like, I'm like sweating like crazy already. But it, it's good, it's like a masochistic kind of uh, pain, you know. I would give this a 3.5 upon 5. I would give this a 4. I really enjoy the gravy, the laksa gravy itself. This was surprisingly good. It's a very humble stall. Anyway. So we've come to the end of today's episode. My favourite was definitely the original Katong Laksa, also known as Janggut Laksa. Coffee cat. I say it first. We have to Finally say agreed on something. Same favourite Laksa, but I'm gonna talk about the second favourite Laksa, 928 Ishun Laksa. I think it is quite underrated. It only costs 280 for the smallest bowl. Worth a try. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching and let us know what you want to see next. See you guys next time. Bye!